and welcome to the Political Ranter Show. So for this video, it's going to be a bit more educational, where I talk about the history of the left-wing movement and the history of the left-wing um, political term and most and what it means to be left-wing and and the policies that are identifying with the left-wing label. So in case you haven't guessed by now, I identify as a left-wing socialist and that is the political term I will label myself even though I'm not really a big fan of political terms because the term right wing and left wing is very subjective when you think about the entire term of left and right wing I don't think they are suitable terms for politics because someone can be left wing in some ways but can be right wing in some ways because the political term and, 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 and the political spectrum is all based on opinion the only thing that's not based on opinion is what is a left-wing policy and what is a right-wing policy. But someone who believes in one left-wing policy necessarily won't always believe in other left-wing policies as well. Which is why politics is such a fascinating thing to be a part of because it's all based on political opinion. So what does it mean to be a left-wing socialist and what does it mean to identify with the politics of the left-wingism. To give you a history on the terms of left-wing or right-wing and where they originated from is that they actually originated from the French Revolution. The Battle of the French Revolution took place in the 1800s and the outcome of the French Revolution after the battle was over was it resulted in the abolishment of the French monarchy. At the time left-wing was meant as a term that supported France becoming a republic state and right-wing was seen as people who supporting the continuation of the French monarchy to rule over the land. Of course the outcome of the French Revolution was the victory of the left-wing troops which resulted in the abolishment of the French monarchy which is why France is a republic today. And since then left-wing politics have been identified with progressive policies and when it comes to left-wing economics this means that you support wealth distribution. So wealth distribution is a left-wing economic policy which promotes income equality. So just to give you an explanation of what wealth distribution is, if there is a food chain of wealth, so you've got business owners, CEOs, office workers, retail, so if if it was a food chain, wealth distribution makes sure that wealth is not hoarded at the top of the food chain. So it is basically the opposite of trickle-down economics. Wealth distribution makes sure that that the wealth of the entire country is distributed equally between all the citizens. So if a country gets richer, every citizen will benefit from that. Unlike trickle-down economics, which promotes tax cuts to the top. And that wealth is expected to trickle down to the rest of us. But obviously we know it doesn't work like that. Because what happens when you cut taxes at the top and let the wealthiest keep most of their wealth? They just want more wealth. This is the most basic ideology of socialism when it comes to promoting that wealth distribution makes sure wealth is, is distributed equally so everyone benefits in the wealth of the country. A universal income is another also economic left-wing policy where where every single citizen gets a monthly unconditional payment regardless of, if, or regardless of if they're in work or not. Now there are different models of universal income and I have been a long-term supporter of universal income because it would help boost the incomes of the lowest paid in our society. Because universal income is an unconditional payment to every citizen in a country, that does mean that it would be given to the richest in our society who don't need that payment. So this is one of the arguments against it. But how my vision of universal income would work is that the wealthiest do get it, but then you tax them more so that wealth can then be distributed to the rest of the country and they all benefit. Preparing myself for the communist comments, but let me assure you that I'm not a communist. The rise of the trade union movement is also associated to left-wing economic policies because trade unions were set up to fight for workers in a workplace to make sure that workers who work in a workplace are fairly paid for the time that they give to their work. So this is also associated with income equality. Policies such as a minimum wage income, which in Britain is at £7 an hour, which is extremely low, Labour had a policy to raise it to £10 an hour to make it in line with today's living crisis. And with the rise of the trade union movement and the workplace economics, you also have a maximum work week, days off in the week, like 
Like the weekend was a leftist idea that came out of the movement of the trade unions, which is another left wing policy to give workers a couple of days off a week to rest. Being on the loony left means supporting the idea of a weekend, then sure. One of the most important left-wing economic policies that have been introduced by left-wing governments across the world is the idea of a welfare state. The idea that if you are unable to work or if you are unemployed, then there is a welfare state to fall back on to make sure you are not driven into poverty. Every single country, specifically here in the Western world, does have some form of a welfare state to make sure that people are not driven into poverty if they are unable to provide for themselves. In Britain, our welfare state comes with council housing, comes with policies such as tax credits and comes with policies such as universal credit and policies that help provide for people. Next type of policy I want to cover is nationalism, the the thought of self home rule and sort of self governance. Now this is an extremely difficult one because nationalism takes many forms because there are left wing arguments for nationalism and then there is the far right Britain first spectrum of nationalism which I think we've all denounced at least once. If we are going to use the idea of Scottish independence for nationalism. I think there are two different sides of the Scottish independence debate because there's the right and there's the left. The thing arguments is that if Scotland was independent, it wouldn't have to be governed by the Tory government because over the last 50 years, every single Tory government that has been enforced in Scotland has been voted by us, the English people, instead of the Scottish people. So there is that side of the argument. And then there is obviously the far right nationalistic argument in Scotland because some because some Scottish people are anti-English I know not everyone is and I've met some Scottish nationalists who are generally nice people but there is the far right anti-English and anti any other nationalism apart from their own that's the, the whole idea of nationalism is that you are really clinging to your national identity historically the left-wing movement have been very anti-nationalism, but there are the left-wing arguments for nationalism as well, which I've just explained. Now, left-wing politics also supports the idea of nationalised public services and limited private interest in those public services, such as the renationalisation in Britain, particularly the renationalisation of railway, water, oil, which has been sold off. Now, renationalisation would mean taking railways, water and taking all those services out of private control and handing them back into government control which means handing them back into public control which means they are publicly accountable and are run in the interest of the people who use them. I have been a supporter of nationalising utilities for the longest time. It's one of the reasons why I used to support the Greens until it was brought into Labour policy. It's because Private companies are particularly run to make a profit. That's the whole idea of private companies. They are run to make a profit. They are not run in the interests of people. If we take trains, railways and stuff like that, if we take them back into public control, they would be run not for profit. So they would be run in the interests of people who actually use them instead of for profit machines. Like our railways were privatised and since 2010, rail, rail fares have shot up by 30% in only eight years. I've done a video on this, you can watch that if you want, but that's the whole reason why I'm wholly against privatisation. It's the same with the NHS as well. I mean, being being supportive of an NHS in public hands, being supportive of a universal healthcare system which is paid for by taxes and progressive taxes, these are left-wing ideas of nationalising utilities. Left-wing healthcare policies would be universal healthcare, but there are different sorts of left-wing policies as well, like single taxpayer, which is a huge debate in America right now, single taxpayer, and um, an, and um, Medicare, which is basically another form of universal healthcare. Now, Obama's Obamacare policy, which I thought was a walking way into universal healthcare, very disappointed it didn't happen, but Obama's healthcare policy, Obamacare, was a walk into left wing, cheaper, affordable healthcare. That's the whole premise of left wing healthcare economics. The same reason why I support a, a universal healthcare system is the same reason why I support the nationalisation of railways. A healthcare system is a, a decent healthcare system for citizens is a human right. So to take that away 
and to replace it with an insurance system means you're bringing private capitalist businesses into something that should be human rights and something that should be there for the people which is why I am literally against private companies providing healthcare. Now, when it comes to social left-wing policies, social left-wing policies are such as like the legalization of drugs, such as weed and cannabis, and the legalization of same-sex marriage, and legalization of basic LGBT rights. That is the whole promise of, of left-wing social policies because they are against traditionalist values. It has been left-wing governments across the world that have legalised LGBT rights and legalised same-sex marriage. So that was a introduction to left-wing politics. I hope to make some more educational videos, but thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.